Everyone knows about 3D printing now. You can see that in the high streets you can make your own Hello Kitties, your iPhone cases, and so on. But the reality is that uh, to make 3D printing uh, real in manufacturing process, there are still m many limitations to overcome. And one is the availability of materials you have. We were working with printing other materials like ceramics and composites, but graphene is the promised material, no? it's the future, it has loads of applications. So we were interested in proving that we could also 3D print graphene. things like diamonds, things like coal, carbon, it's in the air, carbon dioxide, so carbon has many forms. Graphene is a form of carbon that's a single molecular layer of one atom thick, and that's where all these fantastic properties come from. We know that plastic cannot resist up to high, high temperatures, or it's quite easy to break, or uh, it's an insulating material, it's not conductive. So introducing graphene, we can expand the potential of plastic, for instance. So what I'm doing now, I'm applying the pressure. The most common process is something called uh, chemical vapour disposition, CVD. And there's an awful amount of research taking place on that area because there's a lot of interest from the uh, mobile phone industry. And this is where you take uh, chemicals, you heat them in a furnace, you produce a carbon vapour, and you deposit that vapour in a thin film onto a substrate, and you get, if you like, a complete film of graphene material. Yeah, I'm glad it it's fairly simple, it's using the thermal conductivity properties of graphene to make the LED light bulb more effective, more efficient, longer life. So tomorrow or within the next six months you could go to your local supermarket and you could be buying a graphene light bulb that you fit in your home. Probably before mass scale you're probably talking about three to five years and beyond before you see in your everyday phone or your everyday device graphene as a normal element in that product. within the wing there is currently a layer of, of, of copper mesh to achieve something called lightning strike. So if lightning strikes your aircraft you need to dissipate that energy around the aircraft. If I had graphene in there I could potentially could dissipate that energy using the graphene conductivity properties. So again the plane could be stronger, lighter and be able to fly much further than it can today. 
the possibility to manipulate graphene and to deposit graphene um, onto virtually any, any t type of material makes it really versatile. And somehow it's much easier to synthesize than many other nanomaterials that have been studied before. The great advantage is also that we can see graphene in an optical microscope, while other, other nanomaterials cannot be seen in an optical microscope. So we need more sophisticated equipment to see those materials. <laughs> The graphene is highly hydrophobic, so if you have oil and water mixed together, you put this membrane and would be able to separate the oil from the water to clean a spillage, for instance. It's a, a plastic, but it feels better than the previous plastics um, what Samsung have built in.